<laughs> Ooh, hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. I thought I'd come and make this video just just talking about things on my mind. It looked like, I don't know, I, I started thinking, when it's time to go to bed, I guess I'm, you know, getting, reflecting on everything that happened during the day. Today I went and got this nerve test done, the EMG. I've had one back in 2007 when I first had this back injury. And today, this guy, he's an older man, Indian guy. And he, to me, he's he has no personality. That's the way I can say it. No personality. He looks just like a crow, an old crow. A mean old crow. So I was in the in in the exam room, and you know they put these old leads on you, and and he has this foot pedal, and he hits it, and he sends electric shocks through your hands, and you know trying to see the timing on your your reflexes. So anyway, he he. He kept doing it, and that that shit hurt. I mean, it was like I knew he had to do both hands, but it's like he was enjoying the pain he was inflicting on me. And he didn't tell me um, when he first did it what to expect that he I was gonna be shocked. And I don't know. He just kept on doing it. Then he said it was hot in the room. I mean, it's real hot, and I'm sweating. Then he grabs my hand. He said, you put you put a, a lotion on your hand, however Indians talk. And I said, what are you talking about? I don't have no lotion. Hell, it's hot in here. That's why I'm sweating. Get me a towel so I can wipe my hand. I mean, I, I just didn't like him. Um, he said, oh, 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 you're right, you're right. So he looked like he was going to take some revenge out on me because he um, kept the, the, when he got to the left hand, that was, no, the right hand, it was, the reflex was real slow, which I knew that would be. And he just kept on till I started jerking and my fingers started flicking and, and I told him, I said, if you shock me one more time, I'm going to knock the shit out of you. I said, you got to know if you know what's going on. I, I do it one more time, one more time. <laughs> and he did it, and that was it. Then he go with these needles sticking me all in my hands and neck. And The exam went long, but it was just him. And when I'm laying, lying on the bed like that with, with my back injury and my neck injury, I have to have someone to assist me to get up, get, grab me by my hand or something. He didn't even understand that. And so he he finally did, and he helped me get off the exam table. But he just left a bad taste in my mouth. But anyway, the um, results was a carpal t bilateral carpal tunnel and cervical radiculopathy, which I knew that was the, the cervical, but I didn't, I kind of felt I had carpal tunnel from all the work that I've done and broken knuckles and all that kind of stuff from doing upholstery, pulling fabric off of furniture. But anyway, we'll see what the other doctor says. We'll probably get some injections or whatever for the carpal tunnel. And I might probably get another cervical injection. I haven't had one in probably nine months. So that would ease up some of the nerve pain. But anyway, getting back to the real issues, I was just, I, 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 my battery charger on my laptop, I knew it was going out because it wasn't charging. And I had a whole bunch of other old raggedy chargers that I just don't throw away. It's like I have some kind of faith that I'm going to get a little more energy before I throw it away. So I keep them, but I have this HP and the battery chargers uh, almost cost a hundred dollars. So I was, ooh. but the thing finally went out, and I said, God, I hate to buy another 
charger. So I was just talking to myself and there's something magical about my closet, but I, I go in there and just keep talking and, and knowing I need to clean out the closet, but I heard the same voice telling me to look up. And I finally looked up, and what do I see? A, a laptop charger that wasn't by Targus. It was about. It was made by HP. And I said, "Wow! I didn't even know I had a brand new one." So that was a miracle. That's what I call a miracle, because the voice says, "Look up," and there's this <laughs> charger that I was looking for. Ooh, my neck hurts. But anyway. I was um got my my computer charging up and excuse me doing my head like this but it feels better when I support my big head. But I was thinking about the uh, the voodoo religion and the calling and what difference does it make if I heed the call of the voodoo? Because I've, I've studied with almost every religion, and I, I find good, and, and it's kind of like a stepping stone. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of like squeezing a sponge, and you get something out of each sponge, and then you move on to something else. But uh, I was thinking about back in... I think it was 98, my mother-in-law passed away, and I loved this woman. I knew her when I was a kid. We all went to the same church, but I remember my mother did something for her, and she wanted to give my mother some money for doing it, and my mother said, no, no, no. And that was back in the day when we wore scarves. I think it was about nine no, I hadn't even started my cycles. I had to be about seven. So I had a head scarf on my head. And she and I had a cold, I remember that. And she said, Let me tie your scarf up tighter. And she, I could feel her putting something in the knot of the scarf. And she says, When you get in the car, you take this out and give it to your mother. And I didn't know what it was, but anyway, I did like she said. And when I got in the car and, and Mama started driving off, I handed, I undid it, and it was probably five dollars. That was a lot of money back then. And I gave that to my mother, and she just smiled. She was so happy. But this this woman, we call her Sister Taylor, and I ended up marrying in her family her her son that she adopted, and I ended up calling her Kame. But when she passed away, it was kind of like an argument between the, the women in the family. And they didn't give me anything. And I, I really wasn't expecting anything. But they gave my ex this lamp. But the night after the funeral, I had a dream. She came into my dream. And she was giving out bed spreads and quilts and a whole lot of stuff to to the relatives and I was standing there kind of feeling left out like I was in in real life and then she said to me in a dream pick the color yellow yellow is the color you need and I saw a pretty yellow bedspread and in my dream the yellow was vivid so I picked the bedspread and then I woke up okay that's, I mean, I remember most of my vivid dreams. So, uh, back in 19, I would say 91, I, I made a video about this too. I ended up meeting this guy that was, uh, he was in Yoruba. He was a Yoruba priest, but I didn't know anything about Yoruba back then. But he was on the radio telling people to come and listen to him speak. And I, I asked my sister to come with me. But before we went to listen to him 
speak. I was dating two men, a married man and um, this guy I met on the job. The guy on the job, oh man, he wanted to marry me and I wasn't even divorced. So in my mind, I was saying, I got to get rid of one of these men. And this, I, I, I'm saying, which man should I keep in my mind? And this, this voice says to me, the man that gives you something yellow, do what he says. So, I'm thinking, the man that buys me something yellow, give me something gold, flowers, yellow. I knew yellow was involved. I says in my mind, the man that gives me something yellow, that's the one I'll keep. But the voice did say, the man that give you something yellow, do what he says. And I'm interpreting the whole, the whole hearing. I'm interpreting it wrong, thinking it's uh, one of the men that I was dating. I'm being carnal. So I urge my sister to go to this hotel with me and blah, blah, blah. And you watch my videos, you'll hear the story. One of my earliest videos. But anyway, we get there, nobody's there except for me and my sister. So, he could see how disappointed we were. And this man says, let me give you a reading. I'll, I'll read your palms. Um, so, he said, let's go to the, the restaurant and in the um, hotel and, and we, can, we can talk in private and it's warmer there. So we get in there, he read my palm. This man is it's like he was me telling my story. So at the end of the reading, he tells me there's some things that I must do. Goes in his briefcase, reaches out a bright, bright yellow piece of paper. And he says, I want you to write the things that you want in your life on this paper. And he hands the paper to my sister for her to give to me. When he hands it to her, she throws her hands up in the air. She says, oh, no, I don't have nothing to do with that voodoo stuff. So when she throws her hand in the air, the yellow piece of paper starts floating to the table. Before it hits, hits the table, I reach over and grab it. I said, oh, give me this damn paper. I said, you ain't got to be like that. Just give me the paper. So... The paper went from, the guy's name was Emmanuel. It went from his hand directly to me. But anyway, make a long story short, I didn't. And I wrote down a whole bunch of stuff. He told me how to make an altar. I didn't know nothing about that. I said, altar? I see this. And we get in the car coming home. I did not remember what the voice said until... My sister was driving off. We was talking about what a crazy morning it was. And nobody at the this big auditorium. I mean, at the hotel. Yeah, it's a, a meeting room. And I said, and the only thing this man did was give me this damn yellow paper. And when I said yellow, I remembered that the voice said, the man that gives you something yellow, do what he says. And... I mean, that, that shook me. And uh, the guy that did the reading, he said, I must do what he says because danger is coming my way. He said, you need this for protection. He gave me some scriptures, Psalms 91 and prayers at four o'clock and candles. And I did all these things. He said, do this for nine nights. And I did it. A morning, early morning. Did it nine days straight. I'm rushing. Let me slow down because I'm looking at the clock. But I got to tell this story right. So, I did everything. And uh, after the nine days, I mean, I built the altar just like he said. And the water. And somehow he wanted me to put lighter fluid on the altar. He said the ancestors wanted that. And he mentioned Oshun and Legba and all these names didn't mean nothing to me because I had never heard of none of that. But I knew he was doing something with Buddha and that I, I just did what he said because 
the voice had told me the man that give you something yellow do what he says and uh, I guess maybe nine months after all of this me and my ex went back to Calvin and I got hooked on drugs after that but long story short I was able to come out of that and and because the yellow piece of paper that he told me to write on, and I don't know why, I ended up tearing little snippets of this paper. And when I would be in my drunken, my high stupor, I would write on this and tell myself to hold on because you are loved. And I would put dates on it and all in Bibles and books, little pieces of this yellow paper. And you got to read the book, Going Home Another Way. But that was a time when I had been clean off of drugs ooh, for, oh, I can't remember how many years. But somehow we ended up moving. Oh, I know. That's a long, another whole story. But anyway, I had to come up with some money for my son to get his interest in college. So I you know, I had to move and sell everything. But anyway, after I was unpacking my clothes, I ended up going through a coat. And in this coat was a little snippet of this yellow paper and a crack pipe. And when I saw this pipe, I thought I was, you know, over drugs. Man, I ended up going through the pockets, turning the line and inside out, looking for a little piece of crack. Because I had a pipe in my hand. I fell on the floor and cried and cried. Because, think about it, if I did find a piece of crack, I would have smoked it. And all of my sobriety would have been just gone in the smoke. So... I managed to pull myself up out of the closet, and that was some change in the coat and the yellow piece of paper. And I managed to get to the bed, wipe my eyes, and I read what was on this yellow piece of paper. And it said, I love you, girl. I had a date on it. And I just seemed like the air got lighter, and I felt so much better. But never, I still hadn't connected all this yellow paper and even him saying Oshun. And I know, you know, you have to get a reading to uh, know who your Arisha is. And now that I connect all these dots in the past, I said that he was giving me a reading and the dream of my my mother-in-law telling me that yellow was my color and what I needed to pick yellow and the yellow piece of paper. Okay, now, it's not a question, but I know I'm on a different path. I'm on a different stone on my way home. And Oshun is the path that I'm on. And all of the Orishas and things that's going on and the weird things that have been happening. And I forget what what which one of the Orishas, I think it's Papa Legba, I think, that likes to play games. And I made a video about this, how I could hear marbles rolling in my carpet, in my closet, just marbles all day long. And I'd turn the TV up, trying to let make it go away and I would look in the closet when I look in the closet I didn't hear the marbles rolling I got carpet on the floor so why do I hear marbles playing and after a couple of weeks I got so tired of that sound I opened the closet door and cursed I said you kids get these damn marbles and go outside I'm tired of listening to that and the the Marbles, the sound of marbles stopped. Okay, here I am now at the crossroads with this um, voodoo 
religion and I don't I don't like I say I take the uh, religions that I come upon and I squeeze it like a sponge and take the medicine and whatever is in I use it as a bomb I use it for healing to help me on my way so right now I'm on this voodoo path and I'm going to stop because I got a funny feeling. I'm going to run out of time. I'm going to stop right now. And then I'll make a part two. Because it's, I, this won't let me upload. But anyway, we talking about me embracing uh, the Oshun, okay? Be back in a minute.